When the war erupted in Libya in February 2011, over half a million people found refuge in neighbouring countries. Libyans worldwide have come together to show support and solidarity. Yet despite the collapse of Gaddafi's regime, thousands of Libyans remain stranded in refugee camps. I journey to one of the largest of these camps to speak to those who feel they have been forgotten. So we've currently just arrived to Jerba and we're just making our way to uh, some of the campsites that are situated next to around the uh, Tunisian-Libyan border. Four main camps are created on the southwest of Tunisia. Dahiba is one of two main crossing points for people that had fled the conflict in Libya. The Dahiba camp is situated right next to the border and is run by the government of the United Arab Emirates. An hour away is the Ramada camp, managed by UN administration. Tatooine's soccer stadium is a project of the Kingdom of Qatar, and the final camp is based in Shusha, a site also being monitored by the UN. We arrive at the Ramada camp. The women here seem anxious to return to Libya, the men not so much, fearing to find everything they had destroyed. Among the refugees is Sadiq Imahrug and his family. They came from Zintan in the southwest of the capital. What made you decide to stay in the camps as opposed to going back home now that the regime has collapsed? Three kilometers from the border is where I meet Leila, who fled from Nalut in the western mountains of Libya. فخايفين علينا اهلنا من مرتزقة القدافي ومن صواريخ القدافي هربون عن طريق الحدود ما جيناش عن طريق البوابة لأن نص الشعب الليبي من غير جوازات سفر وطلعنا من الحدود وصار معنا حادث في الطريق في حالة رعب وخوف من الصوات وفي الطريق في توار يقولون أسرعوا لأن الكتاب قريب يوصلوا صواريخ ومورانا فهمتي Can you tell us if you had anybody who passed away from your family and how? Do you find that your stay here or being here in Tunis is safer for you than in Libya? Despite feeling secure in Tunisia, Leila reveals how the camps are failing in regards to hygiene and medical care. دكاترة قالوا لنا مش نظيفه ميتهم هي من هي مية معلبة اسمها معين لكن قالوا لنا مش مش صالحة للشرب يعني في هلبة نزلتهم كلاوة هنا طبعا ما فيش حل بديل ما فيش مية تانية ما عندناش إمكانية باش نطلع برا نشرب مية تانية وسام is a Libyan volunteer in the camps who chose to stay in Tiba as much help is needed. والله إيش نقول لك مفروض إن نظافة مفروض باستمرار فالمخيم ما ينظفوش إلا بعد ما يجي يعني واحد واصل كي يجي ينظفوا إلا يجي بسبعين ثلاثة ما ينظفش يجي واحد واصل حقهم يجاو ينظفوا اللي خذيه ما ينظفش أو في الحاجة الثانية أهالي نلوت وزنتان اللاجئين هنا من يوم ما صارت الثورة وهم ما زالوا ما خذوش أي مرتب في يديهم، ما خذوش أي مبلغ مالي في يديهم. الأكل ضعيف ضعيف، في خي واجي كان طبخ غير جيد، غير صحي غير جيد. فحتى الطفل مرات يزروه على الأكل لحظات ويرده، تحقيه في الساحة مجمعز ويرد الأكل. مش متقبلينه. Many children in the camps have suffered a terrible ordeal. 
and the psychological scars are still being felt. To combat this, Islamic Relief has set up a day school within the camps. Amongst the subjects being taught are music, foreign languages and social studies. Subjects that under Qaddafi were either prohibited or censored. جئنا نعطي أشياء معينة للطلبة اللي هي مثلا الشيء الأساسي اللي نحن نقدم الإنسان هي بناء الإنسان الحضاري أو مسمى الأصح نحن نتكلم ونقول أنها تنمية البشرية فنملك إن شاء الله نظرة إيجابية لليبيا المستقبل وليبيا الجديدة ونحن نساهم شعبنا وأطفالنا في رسم مستقبل معين لحياتهم من خلال إدارة الوقت ومن خلال رسم خارطة معينة لتفكيرهم واختيار رسالة خاصة ورسالة عامة وفكرة معينة Amongst the Tunisian teachers in the school camp is Ayman Mlaiki. I asked him whether or not the traumas that the children have faced back in Libya have affected their academic performance. لا في بداية الأزمة يعني أول مجال كان فما شوية يعني كان فما شوية تقوقع حول أنفسهم كانوا رفضين يعني الاحتكاك شوية كان يعني الحالة النفسية الأولى في بداية الوضعية كانت يعني صعبة شوية حتى رفضين أنه أي حد يدخل عليهم غريب يصورهم إلى آخره لكن بعدين والحمد لله يعني نجحنا في التعامل معهم. نتصور كنت تشوفوا فيهم تو يعني عاديين جدا الحمد لله وهذا فضل من الله انه استطعنا انه خرجوهم كل لانه هو طفل لازم يعيش حياته كطفل المفروض ما يكون بعيد عن الحرب وعلى المشاكل الكبار وهذا الحمد لله اللي نجحنا فيه وما عادش عندهم مشكل هذا How did you manage to bring the children out of the trauma that they were experiencing? We had a strategy to deal with it. We had a experience in dealing with the children. We had a plan to deal with it. 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 نلعب معاهم نحكيوا لهم نعمل لهم حفلات الى اخره والاندماج صار يعني كل وخرجوا من من الازمه اللي كانوا يعيشوا فيها. The children also enjoy fun activities from painting and acting to games and competitions. I spoke to Libyan scout leaders to find out more about their role. نحن مجموعه حركه العلم وكشافه ومرشدات في ليبيا فوضية كشاف بنغازي الرحله كلها الجروب بالكامل 12 قائد. الهدف من الرحله هي مساعده اخوتنا اخوتنا النازحين من جبل الغربي طبعا الهدف من الرحله هي مساعده اهالينا As I understand uh, these children have suffered some kind of psychological issues can you tell us a little bit more about what kind of problems they have faced في لما جي فتاه ولا طفلين قدام بعضهم تحق في عدوانيه مفرطه يعني المفروض سنة 10 سنين لا تلقاه يضرب ويهرج وينت ينتش في الشعار يعني في عدوانيه في سلوكيات يعني اكتساب من الحرب سيئه فيه مرات تلقاه منطوي خايف يعني تلقاه بروح الانطواء يجيب مثل تقول له تعال اعلم ما يجيكش يقدر يخاف منك في وحدين هلم حوشين نطاح نجي يقول لك ما عادش عندنا حوش. Right, I can see you've got your magazine, so can you tell us a little bit more about that؟ القايمين بالمجله كلهم قاده في الكشافه، تحكي عن المواضيع دور الكشافه شنو في المجتمع؟ شنو هم الكشافه تعرف عن طريق وشنو الخدمات اللي بعد 17 فبراير شنو اللي دارونا؟ طبعا الاشغال اللي دارون واجد نعرف يعني انت عارف لما صار نزوح من العاملين والوافدين اللي في ليبيا المجهود يديروا فيه يعني حرام المجتمع مش عارفين مجهود ناس مجهود ناس ضحت بروح يعني في عندنا شهداء من القاده فتم شنو داروا هذه المجله مش يعبروا يوصلوا الدور نتاعهم للمجتمع نتاعهم هذين المواضيع اللي في مجله بصفه عامه كلنا علي is another scouts leader who has arrived at the camp to help he told me of his organization's financial needs بالنسبة للكشافة ذاتيا نحن ككشافة جينا ذاتيا بفلوسنا الخاص بمالنا الخاص لكن جينا إلى ذهيبة ما كانتش عندنا شيء بالكامل. What specific resources do you feel are missing and uh, is there anything in particular that you need to enhance the quality of your work? نحن أول ما أتينا من بغازي ما كانش عندنا صورة واضحة ما كانتش صورة بالكامل واضحة. جينا لمساعدة أهالينا فقط لا غير شنو هل هي ترويح للأطفال أو مساعدة في توزيع المخازن لم نعلم أي شيء جينا أساسا بنخدم أهالينا هنا فوجدنا ما شاء الله انفتحت يعني علينا الأشياء كثر وعرفونا الناس كلهم وتأقلبنا مع الوضع The aim of these temporary schools and uplifting activities is to try and bring stability and routine back into the children's lives in order to help them deal with the violence they witnessed back home. The Tunisian community has shown its contribution 
by volunteering to deliver concerts for kids inside the camps in attempt to drive momentum and entertain the young refugees. احنا جينا من من توسل عاصمة على طلب من من لجان الثورية الليبية لإقامة حفلات خاصة بالأطفال الليبيين فقط للترفيه عنهم في المشاكل الحرب. What in particular are you trying to address by conducting these activities here? الهدف متنا إنه نحاول نخرج الطفل من العقدة النفسية اللي عاش أيام الحرب. هذا هو الهدف متنا إنه ترفيه. على الطفل نحاولوا بشي يخ ينسى المشاكل اللي عاشها في في ليبيا أيام الحرب. Do you think that these activities are working with the children? أكيد لأنه العروض اللي قمنا بيهم الثلاث أيام هذوما نشحوا مية في المية وخاصة العرض البرح عرض البرح كانت ما يقارب ألف وخمسمية طفل حاضر في القاعة وخرجوا مبسوطين بقدا بقدا ووطلبوا بشنا عودوا لهم عرض آخر لأنه خرجوا مترهدين بقدا. Support is also being met from international bodies. Amina and her mother Riziza had just arrived to Dhiba when they spoke to me about their contribution. We came from Manchester, all the, all the way from Manchester. We brought two ambulance cars and we went through France and Italy and came all the way to Tunis. And these two ambulance cars are being taken all the way to Nelut, to the mountains. Aziza is planning bigger projects, which she hopes will come into effect soon. نحن جمعية قائمة لها سبع سنوات وقائمة على شؤون وقضايا الطفل والمرأة يعني نقوم بنادي زي نادي صغير هيك يكون فيه مكتبة. Emily Sahli, an American Libyan, came to visit the camps from Seattle, Washington. Anticipating to find broken spirits, she was shocked to see positive attitudes all round. This is uh, very new. I'm very impressed with the professionalism and the emphasis on education. I think that's very important. Uh, I also think it's very important that for children the politics aspect is not being uh, portrayed to them at all. Emily's father joins her on her journey and shares with me his experience from Libya. When I came here, I didn't think I want to, I, I decided just to stay in Dhib, in Dhib. But when I look at the border, I, I, I smelled freedom. I told my brother, like, I don't want to drive, I want to walk. I walked. There is, no, there is no interior minister, there is no exterior ministry, there is no, no, uh, where you, there's no questions. What, what are you, who are you, what, you know? I just gave them my uh, Libyan passport, expired. I said, my passport is expired. When American, he said, no. He just wrote my name and he said, welcome to your country. That's it. Wow. And then when I went to the mountain, I see kids are happy, uh, smiling, uh, free. And then when I see people from Masrata, my village, from Benghazi, doc doctor without borders, new machines in the hospital. Wow. Despite some improvements, work is still needed to bring the country back to its feet. World Medical Camp for Libya is one of the leading organizations working to create stability within the country. The charity's headquarters is based in central London, where I went to meet its press officer and find out more about their campaign. We are such a new organization. We were set up six months ago and we only got our charity status in July. Um, so we're still yet to mature and have a focused campaigning strategy. The way we've worked is we react to needs. So we'll get a call from a hospital in Mithrata, we need so-and-so, and we need it now. So we'll um, do an appeal and then collect the money, buy the aid and send it. So we've never had a sustained campaign where we're saying we're campaigning just for this cause, this is what the need is. We'll, we'll, we're just, we work more on an appeal demand basis. We've definitely used social media to our advantage. So we've you know, had a Twitter account and our Facebook accounts where we interact with people that supported us or want to know more about the issues, or they'll contact us through Twitter or our Facebook, saying that even doctors or nurses will like contact us and we want to help. How do we help? And they found us through social networking. So we find it more of a, a, a gathering place or a networking place. Also, we have used it to raise awareness, but you know, um, but we've never used it to gather information. So our information of what's needed has always been through one-to-one -one contacts with hospitals and doctors on the ground and people on the ground, rather than relying on a tweet here or there. Because how do you ever verify? anything um, and especially in Libya with places where that needed the help we do want to um, build more because we're quite a young organization we have you know quite very young innovative um, volunteers we do want to explore more of the opportunities with social networking um, with regarding to campaigning um, raising donations etc 
Um, so that's something that we're going to be exploring. Um, but at the moment, and we also want to build up our website to make it more interactive, um, more user-friendly, and kind of more exciting and new. Now we have this sort of reading space, I guess, that was happening in Libya, um, that we can now concentrate on sort of maturing our organization and building it up. Hassan Atiga is one of the directors of the charity. I asked him what work is being done to help Libyan refugees stranded abroad, some of which are too traumatized to return. Uh, with the recent events, we understand that the National Transitional Council has made plans to, to help the Libyans stranded ab abroad through the Libyan embassies with the assumption that they are now the governing authority. However, we understand the logistics and you know, log logistical and the time scale to achieve that. So until then, of course, we will help with our means. Our vision is basically about the children and women after war. How can they help them psychologically? How can we help them to rehabilitate them back to normal life? Um, how, to, how can we help with the families to, to move back from the refugees camps in Deba and these areas in Tunis and, as you mentioned, in Egypt and Italy, back to their homes? Arish Shalabi is a student in London who has volunteered with the organization since its launch. She tells me of the role students such as herself have taken in the charity. We do have uh, student ambassadors in many universities around London and outside of London. For example, we have been in contact with uh, uh, societies like uh, society leaders in, in universities and they were very interested in our cause and have actually kind of got people in the society to donate to our charity. So our charity has been very successful in generating aid. We have been, uh, we have been receiving funds regularly from people. Our new events would be more abseiling events kind of students and we're going to start targeting people during freshers week to try and help them fundraise and donate to people who still need our medical supplies. Working closely with WMCL is the Libyan British Relations Council which was created to provide dialogue between Britain and the new Libya. I spoke to one of the founders of the organisation to find out what their vision of a democratic Libya entails. Uh, the, the idea here is that to give everybody in Libya a, a fair chance at, uh, at participating in deciding their, their faith, their, their, uh, what affects their daily lives. Your organisation aims to try and provide dialogue and also development reports within the region. How accurate are they and how are they being verified? Eyewitnesses is, is what we're using. We're using people that we know personally, we know who are um, uh, honest and we're not, uh, and we, um, before we go into, for example, we, we, we got involved with the Foreign Office in, uh, in, a, in a series of meetings which were dedicated to different cities in Libya. The idea was to bring in people who were at, at these cities when fighting was going on to, to, for them to, um, to, to say what, what they witnessed with their own eyes. And we usually speak to these people and tell them that uh, uh, as tempting as it is to, to, to exaggerate, uh, do not exaggerate, only uh, stick to the facts that you witnessed. Don't give us anything that you've heard secondhand. Your committee is involved heavily with its relationships with MPs. Can you expand on what kind of relationship you hold? The, the relationship was, was instigated by us. Uh, at the beginning of this conflict, we uh, felt that there was a lot of misinformation um, and, it is, um, and, and, and the wrong assumptions being made in the media simply because um, Libya was, was always a black hole when it came to information. With your connection with the British Parliament, does this mean that Britain has a voice in the decisions that are going to be made in Libya? Not much at all, because the, the idea here is, is for us to influence them uh, with, with, what, with our, our uh, vision of, of what we want uh, Libya to become. Um, the idea here is that we, the, all the information was coming out of Libya was coming through his, his, the official uh, TV channels or the official news cha agencies in, in Libya, which obviously uh, are not uh, fair and are not balanced. And we wanted to make sure that we um, present a different uh, view of what's happening in, 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 in Libya, of what Libyans uh, aspire to and what Libyans are like. So the idea was for us to influence them rather than the other way around. You're working to provide support for a free and fair elections. But does this mean that you silence the opposition voice who may support the Gaddafi regime? Um, we, we have to go through after the last six months, six, seven months of, of civil war, we have to go through a, 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 a 
a conciliatory uh, process uh, between all Libyans. And um, that also will apply to some of um, uh, the, the regime's um, uh, uh, foot soldiers. Um, obviously, you have to draw the line at, at criminal activities, but in terms of ideology, we could not reject people just simply because they, they, they had an ideology that, would, that agreed with Gaddafi's or had an opinion that was different to us. That's exactly what we're trying to go away from. So everybody should have a voice as long as they respect that this is their opinion and, um, and the, the, the majority's opinion will take effect. And if, if they're not in the majority, then they have to respect the, the decision made by the democratic process. Libya can now look forward to what many hope will be a democratic government, elected by the people for the people. But there are many who are afraid to return, knowing their homes, schools and roads have been brought to the ground. The revolution's core demand for freedom has so far been protected. For now, the real test remains. Rebuilding Libya and forming a democracy.